historical supports. Historically, we have four broad supports. We have natural support for recovery, meaning I mobilize resources inside myself, I initiate and I sustain recovery. And I do that in many cases with the support of my family or extended social network in some cases. Limited generalist support, meaning that I may also reach out for the support of my primary care physician or my pastoral counselor or my rabbi, or on and on and on. Natural, non-specialized supports. I may end up in marriage counseling and get some guidance related to my drinking and some cues related to that that help me begin to rein in and make a decision around my alcohol and drug use. But primarily, we've had two major force sources of specialized support. Peer recovery support within the organized recovery fellowships, and secondly, this thing we have called specialty sector addiction treatment. So if you look at these categories, we've got mutual aid on one side over here on the left, and we've got specialty sector treatment on the life with a bit of a strained relationship between these two primary institutions over a couple hundred years. But essentially, they're it in terms of specialty support. Now, if you look in the middle, historically, we've had a vacuum. Because these, these two ends of this have been a kind of sanctuary, if you will, safe places for people to recover. And yet the middle of this, we find histories of maltreatment, histories of contempt, histories of discrimination. So, so the center is a history, almost a history of what isn't there more than what is there. So let's look a little bit about what's changing on the two sides. On the mutual aid side, we've seen this explosive growth of recovery mutual aid programs, not only in the United States, but around the world. Secondly, as we're seeing the philosophical diversification of recovery mutual aid beyond anything we could have envisioned. Even though, paradoxically, co-attendance is common. Not unusual for people and women for sobriety to also attend women's groups in AA. Believe it or not, not unusual for people in secular organization for sobriety or life ring secular recovery to also attend AA meetings, particularly Quad A, Atheists and Agnostics in Alcoholics Anonymous. So, so in spite of these sort of silos, we're getting sort of interesting combinations there. For close to 200 years, one's identity over on this left side was primarily linked to one's recovery mutual aid society. So the identity was the identity of an AA member or an NA member or a Women for Sobriety member or Smart Recovery member. What's changing over on the left that I'm going to talk a little bit about is we're now beginning to see the emergence of a larger culture of recovery in which people are stepping beyond their fellowship identities and beginning to define themselves in common as people in long-term recovery. 